everyone and welcome to our weekly World of Darkness news show. During the month of darkness, we have just shared something big. The brand update, which is uh, available right now on worldofdarkness.com, has shared news about development of Werewolf the Apocalypse and the new splat we are bringing into the fifth edition, Hunter the Reckoning. We also shared about uh, some differences right now in how we work because of the pandemic and also Justin moving back to States and with us working with him continuously from uh, across the ocean, you could say. And uh, about that and more I have uh, to you today in the interview with Justin, to which I welcome you right now. Let's go. How it is in States right now where you are? Uh, I'm in North Carolina, so it's a little bit humid right now. Um, we just got off a uh, kind of unseasonably warm snap, but I guess everything is unseasonably warm right now. So. Absolutely. So yeah, we just uh, published our brand update on our website in which we talked uh, a little bit about the brand development, but also the changes in your life and uh, your uh, work with us currently. So can you very quickly sum it up for the people on the stream here? What exactly changed? Yeah, uh, for the longest time I was uh, there in Stockholm, um, I couldn't get my kids into Stockholm. And so after uh, not being with my family for a year, I had to uh, relocate back to the States uh, to be to be uh, you know, with them, obviously. Um, I miss you guys uh, and sat <laughs> here when we have our meetings like really early in the morning or uh, really late uh, during the day. Um, I feel like, you know, there's there's uh, I, I wish I was back there in the office with y'all. <laughs> it would just be so much easier to communicate. I need to ask that. I mean, I miss you too a lot, but uh, I'm wondering what do you miss the most about Sweden? Is it the uh, Kanelbule or <laughs> something else? <laughs> no, no, I can do my own cinnamon rolls here, but I tell you what I miss most is, uh, I'm gonna sound like an old man, but I'm grasping about the weather. Like, mm. oh, I love it, cold and dark. I love like, especially later in the, uh, the, the Swedish winter where it's like four in the afternoon, and it's dark as midnight. Oh, give me that, give me that. I would exchange very happily with you currently <laughs> as it's getting <laughs> much darker outside. But yeah, as much as we miss you a lot in the office, I'm very happy that we still can work with you and still work on the IP development, which we are doing very uh, intensely here. Uh, we've been keeping a lot of things under the wraps uh, just because we were working on so much and making the decisions about what to do next. And um, of course, something that our fans were waiting a lot for are any updates about Werewolf the Apocalypse 5th edition. Can you sum up how was the work on Werewolf uh, looking like this year? Sure, sure. Yeah, I, I wish we would have been able to share more. Uh, but uh, the way we are working on Werewolf, there is um, a lot that has changed. There's been a lot of, of, of work uh, updating Werewolf uh, to kind of more modern sensibility. On the plus side, like uh, Native American consultants, um, and it is a uh, pair of them. Um, one of them is a uh, Menominee uh, PhD. She has a PhD in education. Um, and the other consultant we're working with is a uh, tribal elder of the Ojibwe, um, who is also a uh, former um, tribal council member. Um, so we're getting their perspectives on some of the changes that we're making to werewolf. Um, obviously, uh, the werewolf kind of culture is set up so that uh, you know there are these tribes and previously there were a lot of tribes that were specifically tied to uh, like real world cultures mm -hmm. Um, what we're trying to do in Werewolf 5 is uh, break a little of that away so it's no longer, oh, you're this background, okay, you have to be this tribe. Um, instead, we're trying to open up the tribes so that uh, you fit them kind of conceptually and you can be any real world cultural background you want. So if you choose to have, you know, a Native American silent strider, great, no problem. You know, if you choose to have a uh, North African uh, Black Fury, great, you know, it all, it all fits that way. So we're trying to open that up to be a little more inclusive. Um, and so that, of course, has has made some uh, changes to the kind of structure of werewolf society itself and uh, the, the world itself. Of course, and uh, that, it's great to hear, you know, tribes are staying because a lot of people were speculating whether the tribes are going to stay or not. Uh, what other changes can we expect from Werewolf the Apocalypse 5th edition now that we are pretty advanced in the development? Sure, sure. Yes, uh, the tribes are staying. There are 11 playable tribes in the core book as we're working on. Um, all of the 13 tribes that were present from the previous editions do still exist in the world, but let's say that um, some of their perspectives have changed. Um, one of the tribes has basically had it uh, with the Guru and is trying to seek solutions elsewhere. Um, one of the other tribes probably doesn't have that uh, that positive an outlook there. They don't uh, they don't necessarily have as bright a future. 
Uh, but one of the things that uh, is significant um, in uh, Werewolf as we go into the fifth edition, a new edition is a chance to do things differently, right? If you're mm -hmm. just going to do uh, kind of a continuation, uh, you would continue supporting an earlier edition as opposed to uh, developing a new edition. And so one of the perspectives that has changed for the new edition is uh, the fact that there's a lot of uh, young werewolves who uh, no longer think that we are you know, fighting to hold the apocalypse at bay. Um, it's almost a post-apocalypse sort of situation. I don't say that uh, to get people thinking like, you know, it's Mad Max or something like that. But, yeah. you know, instead, it's, we're, we're in kind of a world that is almost in its death throes, right? Um, and as humans, we don't typically observe it. We're happy. We've got, you know, high speed internet and video games. And what we don't realize is that we're kind of the frog slowly being boiled, slowly being boiled. Mm -hmm. So from the perspective of a lot of these young werewolves, the apocalypse has come and gone. And now they're having to kind of fight back to take back the gains uh, that this apocalypse has given to this cosmological uh, entity. You know, the worm is trying to hasten the world into entropy, into destruction. Um, and so now these young werewolves feel this desperation uh, to take things back. They've lost a lot of cairns. They've been broken off from the Umbra. The Umbra is now a very scary place um, that almost even uh, ejects werewolves from it. Um, so there's a lot more, um, there's a new perspective on the horror of being a werewolf, um, and there's a lot more immediate call to action. So, you know, it's less of go fight that logging camp, and it's more you've lost your sept, you've lost, you know, your, your cairn, go take it back. Um, mm -hmm. The other werewolves, one of the things that I think is fascinating about werewolf culture is um, the, the conflict between the tribes itself. Um, so that's been turned up a little bit. Uh, the Black Spiral Dancers are quite active. Um, there is another tribe that has arguably perhaps fall into the worm. Uh, moreover, I think they express a, a new concept that we're bringing to werewolf called uh, Hoglosk, uh, which is kind of a counterpoint to Hirano. Mm -hmm. Hirano was when you get so, you know, you, it, it's this feeling of, of uh, almost uh, despair um, or, or depression, like, oh, nothing I can do is going to change the world. The worm has already won. At the other end of the spectrum is this idea of Hoglosk, this, hey, my way or the highway, we have to fucking change things. We've got to act now. We've got to act now. And if you don't do it with me, you're part of the worm, obviously. So there's this kind of like uh, almost uh, hysterical zeal that can overtake werewolves at some point. Um, and this one tribe that has fallen to that is, is just the primary example of that. That's great. And so uh, people that uh, were coming to Vampire the Masquerade with V5 could expect stories that explored very much how humanity works and how people are, uh, vampires are clinging to humanity. Uh, what stories can we expect from Where of the Apocalypse V5? What's going to be the focus? Yeah, that's a great question. Here, we wanted to definitely use one of the things that I think was really strong about Werewolf throughout all of the uh, previous editions, and that's the idea of renown. And so what we're, one of the things that we're really leaning into for Werewolf 5 is this idea of renown, that you know, a werewolf is literally trying to build their legend. The more and more they do, you know, they're working with their pack um, to accomplish things, but really they want to, um, arguably there's this sort of apotheosis at the end where if you die fighting, you can arguably become this representation of renown mm -hmm. um, and renown becomes much more important in terms of uh, some game systems um, one of the things that we're working with um, I don't want to get you know too much into the nitty-gritty uh, but you know gifts come from your relationship with spirits and spirits respect your renown so when you use a gift you're actually invoking your renown as opposed to making you know purely a skill and attribute role so it becomes more about your relationship with the spirit world to use a gift uh, than to just you know use uh, you know the basic things the, the, the basic components of your werewolf. You're actually calling in the spirits uh, to grant you a boon, to grant you a gift, to help you in this case. Of course, and we are going to have a lot of uh, brand new people coming to Werewolf, but also old fans of previous War of the Apocalypse editions that are going to uh, very much look forward to this update. Uh, what other significant changes and updates can they expect? Yeah, this uh, Werewolf is, is uh, again, an opportunity for us to, to take a new look at Werewolf. And one of the things that... Um, I think we want to set aside from previous editions in the interest of making things more inclusive. We're getting rid of the idea of the Midas, for mm -hmm. example, right? Like, you know, it's it's 2021 right now, we're gonna be publishing Werewolf very soon. Um, and one of the things I didn't want Werewolf to focus on was the circumstances of your birth or, you know, the purity of your breed um, or the fact that, you know, if you are born um, in this certain way that somehow makes you lesser. Um, I didn't want to carry those ideas over into New Werewolf. And I think that will resonate with the community as 
as well. So there are certain elements of you know the previous assumptions of werewolf um, that we're going to set aside. And we've you know gone back to even things like the litany, where um, we're striking um, from the the litany. You know the idea that guru shall not mate with guru, like. Man, the guru have more problems right now than who you're <laughs> sleeping with. So let's, you know, let's not worry about that. You know, love who you love and focus on, you know, taking back the world from this this apocalypse that's that's crushing it. I love this. So somewhere during this year, uh, during the development of Werewolf the Apocalypse Fifth Edition, the decision uh, was made that uh, we need more time to uh, to to work on Werewolf just because of, of course, all these sensitivity issues and making sure that we make this edition the best possible, but also shifting focus to develop something else. Can you tell us a little bit how this happened and what was the reasoning behind this? Sure, sure. Uh, yes, as you say, you know, the more we got into Werewolf, the more we looked at, you know, is this a viable idea today? And I, I have <laughs> I have all of the drafts from all of the writers for Werewolf, uh, but we're still basically baking it. Um, that being the case, uh, we wanted to uh, bring to players an additional World of Dark Darkness experience, uh, but Werewolf wasn't quite ready to do that. So one of the things that we do have on the back burner that we've been cooking for a while now um, is a new edition of Hunter the Reckoning. Um, and I think this is a particularly resonant idea because uh, the, the this, this in Vampire, the notion that we're in the time of the Second Inquisition is very strong. And so vampires obviously see these hunters um, as primary antagonists. But also the way we wanted to look at Hunter to provide, again, a new addition, a new experience, is that for Hunter the Reckoning, we want players to be that kind of almost coterie style. You're the young group of hunters. You're the street level group of hunters. You're the individual hunters. You're not Special Affairs Division. You're not the Information Awareness Office. You're not uh, Project First Light. Because mm -hmm. all of those groups actually have kind of their own agendas. You, as an individual hunter or as a hunter who is part of a cell of hunters, you want to take the night back from these monsters, right? And so uh, these uh, antagonists, these orgs, um, are trying to fight back the monsters, but they're doing it to impose their own social order. You know, like obviously the SAD uh, as a branch of the FBI, they're very invested in the status quo, right? Mm -hmm. And so the way we see the players, the player in the world of darkness is always the agent of change. Um, so you are, you know, this, this individual hunter going at it on their own. And much as vampires see these big orgs of hunters as the antagonists, they're also kind of your antagonists. You know, they're willing to, you know, maybe write a contract and we'll work with a small group of freelance hunters and they're going to use you like the canary in the coal mine, right? Like, oh, go over there. We think there's vampires over there. So you've got this very tense relationship with the orgs, but also you have to deal with the monsters up in front first and foremost, right? So you've got these primary monsters, you've got these secondary antagonists. And so there's this interesting conflict triangle of, you know, the hunters versus the monsters versus the orgs that exist to enforce the status quo. If there's one thing you don't want as a hunter, uh, it's more status quo because the status quo equals these, you know, overbearing government agencies and also these extremely uh, uh, monstrous antagonists. You've got to fix that, right? And you do it, you know, one night at a time, one monster at a time, one conflict at a time. That's amazing. And when you're coming to World of Darkness, let's say starting from Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition, and you know about some vampire hunters existing within the SI, what can you expect from Hunter when you jump from it uh, to, to it from Vampire? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, you know that these organizations are out there, and this is one of the things I really enjoy about um, the kind of uh, starting. You know, the, the 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 initial level of play is that you don't know a whole lot, and so the game becomes very much an experience of of learning. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily you know get in there and go fist fight vampires. Um, you know, it's it's very much a you think a vampire exists. You and this, you know, you, this this cell, this group of other weirdos, outsiders, people who know monsters exist, you know, because the rest of the world doesn't. Uh, now you have to find out. Okay, well, is that a vampire? Okay, it is a vampire. We we know they're drinking blood. We've seen them abducting people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And now you need to figure out more and more about this vampire. So it's not just necessarily jump in guns blazing. You can do that. It won't necessarily be very successful, uh, but it's very much about the discovery of the monster, about the learning. Um, and so you can play it, you know, as a high action setting. Um, you can play it's It's really much more designed to be uh, focused on uh, almost like a, a thriller where mm -hmm. you're learning more and more about this monster. And, you know, maybe it turns out, oh, my gosh, that's not a vampire at all. It's a, it's a werewolf who's abducting these people and doing it, you know, these things. And so, you know, the we, we break it out almost by ratio. There's there's literally a, a, a 
schematic in the book that I'm working with Thomas, the art director on about, you know, how much of your time can you spend learning? How much of your time can you spend, you know, building your action and then, uh, you know, enacting your actual strategy is a small but extremely important part of the hunter experience. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it can do everything from, you know, go fight ghouls immediately to, oh my gosh, we think there's a vampire. And then three months later, we're ready to do something about the vampire. And of course, because it's the world of darkness, everything comes at a cost, right? There's these moral costs of, oh, we don't want to act against the vampire too early because we're not sure about it. But every night that goes by, maybe they're taking another victim, right? And so there's this, this risk, there's this tension of when do we go? When do we go? And then of course, like I was saying earlier, you're after this vampire, but also SAD has been watching this vampire or you know the Society of St. Leopold is in there too. So are they using you to flush out the vampire? Do they even know about you? You know, when you show up, is there this tense three-way standoff between you and the inquisitors and the monster itself? You know, there's there's so much room for story to develop here. That's a really cool uh, trinity of powers uh, in, in Hunter. But I'm wondering, uh, for uh, I feel like it's much easier to describe uh, for uh, starting players why vampires are cool or why werewolves are cool. Because, hey, they're monsters. They have those supernatural powers. They have disciplines, clans, tribes, gifts. Uh, what about hunters? What's so cool about the hunter that would make people want to play them? Yeah, that's great. That's great. Uh, one, one of the things that uh, we always like to do with the World of Darkness is uh, provide like a group that you can identify with. Um, and so we've borrowed a little bit from the previous editions of Hunter for this. We're not carrying over the idea of the imbued themselves, but what we are carrying over is the idea of there are these creeds, mm -hmm. there are these outlooks that you that you take to the world. Um, and so, you know, your creed might be based on your faith, or it might be based on uh, your ability to uh, bring weapons to bear, or it might be based on the idea of, you know, vampires often move in these subcultures or monsters often move in these subcultures. Um, so kind of who you know and where you can move in these subcultures. Uh, so all of these kind of form the foundation of the idea of creeds. Uh, so players will have creeds that they choose and belong to. And also one of the things that players will have um, in terms of the, uh, you know, the, the get shit done abilities, um, we're calling those again, edges that we borrow from earlier edition. And edges is kind of, they're not necessarily supernatural this time around uh, but they are the things that hunters have access to because of their creed because of their drive mm -hmm. um, that gives them these you know little bit uh, kind of above your basic human competency things you know this may be uh, access to an arsenal um, this may be you know something like true faith or some other you know otherworldly investment um, it may be uh, a, a pronounced amount of access, right? You may have at one point worked for one of these orgs and so you still have backdoor access to their database and you can figure things out that way. So there's a variety of kind of, think of it as a hunter's toolkit. Um, and when previously I said too, hunters are all driven, one of the things that makes hunters different from just a person with a gun who knows about vampires um, is their drive. There is some reason, there is some burning passion they have to take back the night from these monsters. And that drive uh, represents, um, well, well, we'll start to share a little bit more of the mechanic in mechanical insights of, of Hunter with uh, the community very soon. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, every hunter is a hunter for a reason. They're all driven to do it for something. That's great. And uh, can you share with us what is the current state of Hunter development? <laughs> uh, at the end of this week, uh, I'm so close. I'm so close. <laughs> I have two more org write-ups uh, to finish to get done. Um, I have some connective tissue to turn in, uh, but we are uh, ready to hand the uh, manuscript over to uh, Thomas has already been starting with some art direction on it. Hopefully we can share some art from it soon. Um, I need to turn it over to editing next. I need to turn it over to our diversity reader next, um, and then we can get the book. It's already in some amount of layout, um, and then we can get it put together and sent off uh, to our publishing partners or Renegade. That's amazing. So, uh, of course, we are uh, not giving exact dates just yet because of the current ongoing global shipping crisis and uh, some of these things may, may make things a little bit uh, longer, but we really hope to deliver Hunter to people soon. And uh, I did confirm with Thomas, I can say it already, that we will go going to have some art to share just this month. So uh, we're going to definitely share some more things with the community. All right. So now that we talk about Werewolf and Hunter, I want to very quickly go back to Vampire and uh, uh, thank you very much much for sharing your uh, chronicle creation uh, blog post with us uh, last week. It was really uh, amazing. Can you give us a little bit more of a, um, I want to say promotion, but uh, can you tell us a little bit more about this blog and two of the story blogs that you have written so people that may have not seen them already uh, may just go and, and check them up? Sure, sure. Um, that is one of the things that I have noticed most about um, 
working on World of Darkness uh, in the fifth edition is that we have a lot of new players. In fact, um, I don't have the most current uh, data survey, but we have more new players uh, at this point than we have um, longstanding players. Yeah. And so many of the things that these new community members are asking is they may not even have come to uh, tabletop RPGs through the traditional vector of, you know, oh, I've played, you know, with friends or, you know, maybe they come to it through LA by night or maybe they come to it, you know, some other, some other manner of discovery besides just playing at the table. So for many players, there's, uh, you know, how do I put this together? And that was really the thinking behind that, uh, the blog post there about how you build a story um, is if you've never done this before, start thinking of a story in terms of, you know, its atomic units. What do you need? You know, how do you create conflict? Um, well, you know, what is going to keep the players invested? You know, as a player, what is my role at the table? You know, the storyteller needs to do something, the player needs to do something. And so, you know, the idea of we're introducing players to um, not just the hobby of tabletop RPGs, uh, but the methods by which they're going to construct the stories that they collectively tell at the table. And so that's what we're trying to do a lot with the blogs is, uh, you know, for long-term players, you know, these are maybe different ways to think about it. You know, you've, you've done it this way forever. Um, so, you know, maybe you can start thinking about it this way. So there's new thought there. Uh, but also for the players that we're introducing to the community, you know, here's how you do this from ground, you know, ground zero. You know, what is, what is the first thing I do when I want to start telling a story? You know, think about your conflict. Here's a couple of conflicts that can work for Vampire. You know, think about how your players are going to react with it. You know, here's some some points at which they can touch the story and change the outcomes. You know, again, like I was saying earlier, the players are always the agents of change. So, you know, as a storyteller, you're building something that you want them to to touch and move the pieces of. You're not building a museum exhibit that they, you know, aren't allowed to change. You know, yeah. you're kind of setting up the blocks for them to come in and kick apart, right? Yeah, sure. And you know, I've been starting a plenty in my life, but still this gave me a lot of very cool ideas. So thank you so much for sharing these because they're super insightful. And uh, folks, if you want to check them out, they're on worldofdarkness.com website. So so they're uh, there already. And yeah, I think that's all, Justin. Thank you so much for sharing your insight about Werewolf Hunter. Can't wait to share more with the community. And uh, I wish you, uh, crossing my fingers for the work on Hunter to finish successfully this week. And <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Talk to you soon. Bye. And we're back. And uh, this was the interview with Justin Achilliot. We have recorded in the previous day that uh, is going to, it has shared with you more information about both Werewolf and Hunter development. Uh, we have more information on our website and we're going to share more just this month during Month of Darkness. We will have some fragments of the upcoming Hunter book and some artwork from it to share with you. So uh, tune into Month of Darkness if you want to get to know more about it. And in the meantime, I'm going to jump into the next news from the past week. So, World of Darkness Crimson Thaw is out now, and this is actually very much on topic because we were talking about Werewolf the Apocalypse uh, 5th edition, and uh, Crimson Thaw has some material, uh, or should I say maybe the description which is going to lead you into the World of Darkness, uh, Werewolf the Apocalypse 5th edition. This uh, comic book, it's a comic book event, it's a shorter series than Winter's Thief, continuing the Winter's Thief storyline, which combines vampires and werewolves into one story, with Cecily Bane in the very middle of it. And and at the back matter, as usual, there's uh, materials which you can use at your role-playing table. And for the particular first issue of Crimson Fall, you have a description of the state of the world that uh, War of the Apocalypse 5th edition is going to introduce. It is uh, not uh, going to be uh, describing every single thing about Werewolf just yet, but it's, it is definitely a very cool uh, introduction to uh, the War of the, War of the Apocalypse 5th edition. And now you can get uh, the comic book in your local comic book stores, in the online comic book stores, as well as on drive through comics if you want to get it so digitally. Uh, I welcome you to read it and let us know what you think. We also shared the previews of Crimson Fall, so if you are not sure if you want to grab it just yet uh, come to the worldofdarkness.com and uh, check out the preview of the first i believe 11 pages of it that we have shared it's really beautiful i hope you will enjoy it and speaking of comic books Vampire the Masquerade Winter's Teeth issue 1 is available right now for free on worldofdarkness.com. You only need to log into your account, whether you have a products account or whether you set it up on a World of Darkness website. Just log, it, uh, log into it and you will be able to download for free VTM Companion, Preview for Sabbat, as well as Winter's Teeth, um, the, the first issue, with uh, additional covers and with the full uh, role-playing section as well. So everything from the first issue is available there for free. I hope you will enjoy it. 
Uh, Winter Thief is out now fully with the 10 issues, so you can uh, read the whole story and then jump into the Crimson Thaw. It's uh, becoming a quite nice uh, World of Darkness comic universe from Vault Comics that we are very proud of. I really hope that you uh, enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed uh, making it. So uh, yeah, check it out on our website. <laughs> And the next news for those of you who create things for the Darkness related, especially if you do that on Storyteller's Vault or if you also do it under the Dark Pack Agreement, feel free to use our official art packs. They are shared on the Storyteller's Vault uh, uh, website right now. I believe you can find them on Drive Through RPG as well if you look for V5 art packs. Um, they come from a variety of the sources. Uh, some of them were made specifically for the fifth edition. Some of them were adapted from the uh, now cancelled World of Darkness MMO RPG from CCP, which uh, we uh, inherited with all the art assets and we don't want them to go to waste. There are so many wonderful art assets from, from that time that we uh, sometimes still use. For example, the one in the background in here actually comes from, from the game. And uh, this pack has tons of things that you can use in. If you, for example, want to make your own source book and put it on Storyteller's Vault. If you want to make your own Discord server or a website about Vampire the Masquerade, or maybe you are doing streams or YouTube or your own chronicles and you want to use art in that, feel free to use there's over 100 artworks available um, in the in the art packs and they are divided in three parts so there is one for characters locations and the miscellaneous so um, yeah feel free to use them and uh, also join us on the dark pack community server there is a link on our website as well where you can talk to other creators and exchange your know-how street tours vault is opening tomorrow by the way so starting from tomorrow you will be able to both publish and buy or download materials which will be shared by the community members for vampire the mask great fifth edition and that means that there's going to be tons of content shared i've already seen some previews that people are sharing here and there uh, as a work in progress and i cannot wait to dwell deeper into what the community is going to uh, come up with and of course this is the way for people to not only uh, make their own um, source books and materials and homebrews but also for those of you who for example want to see some things adapted from the older editions to use them in the fifth edition like do you miss chiasets <laughs> do you miss some bloodlines which we haven't explored i know for a fact there is uh, for sure a uh, uh, source book or materials made for gargoyles which someone is going to post on Storyteller's Vault so yeah there's going to be a plenty of that if you are looking for some more expansions made by fans um, Storyteller's Vault is going to allow you to get them and in the meantime let's jump into the next news and the uh, last news for today is, uh, if you've missed that, we have shared Vampire the Masquerade lo-fi playlist uh, with the uh, animation slash graphic, which hides a lot of secrets. I've seen people finding most of the secrets which this uh, uh, this animation covers, but not all of them yet. So I wonder if you'll be able to uh, get all of the references to Vampire the Masquerade and to Vampire the Masquerade Legacy uh, in this picture. There is um, a lot of that available and the uh, whole playlist uh, takes about 47 minutes total so that's the chill beats for you to uh, contemplate your eternal life to write your chronicles so i really hope that you will enjoy them we handpicked them specifically in order to evoke um, both of course the lo-fi genre and uh, the little bit of darker and more melancholy tunes uh, connected to vampire the masquerade and in the future this place is also going to be available on spotify so if you're looking forward to that then keep tuned stay tuned that's the proper name. And in the meantime, if you uh, are enjoying this, you may actually enjoy it in the background right now if you plan to. I am going to join my dear Hadi and see what she has done for the family spotlight today. Hello, hello, Hadi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hello. Hello, you look beautiful today. Let me just very quickly <laughs> show you to everyone here on the call. <laughs> Wonderful, here we are. So, what have we cooked for Vamily Spotlight today? Let me go from the very top. Oh, we are going again with the themes from uh, from the Vamptober. Yes, and like last week, just the hardest to try and pick. That's, <laughs> that's, that's totally okay. All right, uh, let's check out, so starting from day seven, Hideouts. So this is by Lobolos and um, they post uh, most of their stuff in the, either the Dark Pack or the World of Darkness Discord server. Yeah. And uh, they use the same color scheme for all of their art for Vamptober, and I love it. 
I do remember it, it draws the eye. I do remember them participating in Vamptober last year, and they were doing exactly the same uh, color tones, the pink and, and the gray, which I, I, I love the commitment. It actually looks really, really cool. And uh, yeah, it looks like a pretty cool hideout. <laughs> yeah, it looks like an anarch hideout, maybe a gangrel hideout. And I love the vultures in the front there. And I do believe that the, uh, the one of the vultures, at least, is just, you know, gangrel in the protein form, or not sprout in the protein form, yeah. <laughs> getting their dinner. <laughs> Absolutely. And the next one, I see that we're going for um, for pros. Let me just uh, maybe read it out loud. Is this mm -hmm. place safe? Perhaps for deadly standards. It has iron bars. Oh, wait. You know what? I'm sorry. You should read it because you have a better voice. <laughs> no, you already started. Please continue. Oh, okay. Uh, there's, another one. there's another one I can read. Okay, I'll do this one. Then. It has iron bars on the doors and windows. It has sturdy locks. It has a stray dog on guard. However, none of this protects me from the light, especially sunlight. Even more if it is brought by those who want to see me turn to dust. Oh, no. I'm still too young to die again. Nice. Now, I don't speak Portuguese, so, but I can sort of, it, it basically says that they're participating in um, Vamptober and uh, that they translated it into English from Portuguese. Nice. <laughs> Rodrigo Ragavash, very, very good job. I really enjoyed that. That was really nice. Mm -hmm. All right. And then we're going to day eight, this clan of mine. Okay. So I'm going to say preparatory. I have two TikToks on here. Just the TikTok community has been doing an amazing job of Vamptober, but the majority of it is music that we cannot use. Yes, <laughs> unfortunately. But... I have was able to isolate vocals and replace the music in another TikTok. So that's amazing. This is okay. Thank you so much for for doing this job. Let me see uh, Ramos the Nomads. How many winters? Son of a bitch! If you don't know what that means, it means you're my problem now. Come on, get up! I didn't hit you that hard. Anyway, I was good to look at you. Things first. Have you figured out where you are yet? Good. It's not a conversation I like to have. Judging by the smell of you, you're one of mine. No, I'm not literally one of mine, you idiot. I mean, part of my clan. The pharaohs, the barbarians, clan Gangrel, clan of the beast. And you should be so lucky. You're not part of a long line of survivors, warriors, soldiers. Hell, we even got a thinker or two. You're going to have to prove yourself before you're actually one of us. Commission states one winter alone, surviving on your own. Vision also say since I fucking found you, you're my problem, I have to get you ready. I'm lucky for both of us. It's October, we don't have a lot of time. Training starts now. So they're pouting. Puppies. I kind of want to have him as my sire. <laughs> yeah. I, I really enjoyed the callback to, you know, how many winters, which is something, you know, that Gangrel used to, when they'd come across another Gangrel that they'd ask, and if the answer was, you know, I don't know what that means, is you have to take them in and, you know, adopt them. Yeah, so to speak. That's, that's, I really enjoyed that. That's, that's adorable, yeah. And I, you know, I, I sometimes feel like if I was to be embraced into Order of Darkness, I would kind of prefer to be embraced by that kind of a gang girl than mm -hmm. anyone else. But anyway, the second one I see in here is Alyssa. Yeah. <laughs> so this is also for this clan of mine. And um, doesn't say what clan. Yeah. But I wanted you to guess what you think clan she would be. Um, I mean, Torrider. I, I feel Tor <laughs> I feel like Alyssa actually told me that she enjoys Torrider the most, but maybe uh -oh. I'm wrong. Um, but well, it says it's, it says at the caption, "How do we seem to you? Do you find us beautiful and magical? Drink, you ask me. Do you have any idea of the things you will become?" Tor that gives me Tremere vibes. Tremere? Ah, oh, uh, maybe. The magical. Hmm, beautiful and magical. Now, I'm still sticking with Torridor just You're because... You're sticking with Torridor? Yeah, beautiful and magical. They would still, like, describe themselves this way. Like, let's be honest. <laughs> That's really cool. All right. So they're, they're, they're so pretty, so it doesn't yeah, really matter. Yeah, it's beautiful and the makeup is amazing. All right, I'm going to go to day nine, newly found power. Mm hmm a little photo bashing fan art for day nine of Vamptober. Newly found power. You will find your powers in the heat of actions. That's so cool. Mm-hmm. This is by Alvara, and I actually had to, I found this originally on Discord, and I actually had to ask them where I could find their socials. Yeah. <laughs> and this uh, was labeled as Fortitude. This is, this is definitely uh, something that I would, I would imagine for it to, to be like. And also, what I love about the body effect is that it looks like it's literally made of rock. 
And mm -hmm. uh, we've made it clear that we, we want to, you know, really emphasize how fortitude is this kind of a, you are a stone, you are a rock that cannot be moved from your throne, right? And so, so I believe it's a, it's a perfect visual representation of how this discipline could work, work like. I, love I think it. so too. I think it's really fantastic. Yeah. Uh, which kind of reminds me, I'm very much wondering, you know, uh, how and whether uh, our upcoming venture to Bloodland are going to also employ fortitude. Yeah. Yes, I'm powers. wondering that myself. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, there is a new text in here by Caroline Likes Vampires that I would like to give it to you to read. Okay. I can never stand all the whining, all the whinging about what's been lost and what can never be obtained again. For me, what came after the embrace was like coming home. Not the home I was raised in, but the home I deserved. What can I say? I was my mother's fifth child. Another girl born for want of a son, and quickly overshadowed by the presence of one. No one cared about me. No one listened to me. I always had to work behind the scenes, pushing and pulling the strings so things fell in my favor. But then there was Johan. There was that awful night, and don't misunderstand me, I've lost things too. I can never go back to that lavender field now, and that's all I've wanted for so long. But now I can make people listen to me. Like it or not, they hear me and obey. I just have to... I just have to look them in the eyes and tell them on your knees. Oh, damn. That was a very good story, right? Yes, this is so good. This is something that could easily be, you know, a word director story. It's, it's mm -hmm. like, it, it could be featured. It, it's so good. Mm -hmm. And I, I love how, you know, it, it's, it's this, this thing, you know, like you never know how would you act if you suddenly discovered that newly found power? No, you wouldn't know. But reclaiming, you know, things that you didn't have when you were younger, when you were mortal, when you were still alive and having them in, in the end. That's something that I love exploring in roleplay. And I do it yeah, a lot. I really, oh, yeah. I was going to say, I really like walking that line of, you know, you get that newly found power and it's so easy to abuse it. Yeah, definitely. Because you feel like uh, you're suddenly regaining things that you didn't have when, when you were still mortal and you are trying to um, get back for all the, you know, things that happened to you back then. But it mm -hmm. can be so easily a path to, to darkness and to losing your humanity. I love it. It's wonderful. I, 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 I just feel like that perfectly encaptures what can be the foundation of so many characters in Vampire the Masquerade. Yes, Car Caroline, I, I love it. I love it. If you, if you listen to this, uh, I just I need to find your Tumblr <laughs> and get to read more of that. There's so much good stuff on Tumblr. Go check out Tumblr. I gotta, I gotta check it out. All right. Inner Monster. We have uh, two in here. We have... Uh, uh, or is that one? Is the other one is no. Uh, there's a reason I just put a link there, and you'll have to wait to click the link to find out why. Mm, okay, <laughs> let's <laughs> let's focus on the first one. What what do we have here from Andrea Laura? Mm -hmm. This is day ten inner monster. So this is a representation of of the beast in, within, Aww. just sort of a mirrored, darker reflection. And um, I thought it was really, really, really beautiful. I love it. And also I like the fact how the beast is kind of like uh, similar to the, the, mm -hmm. the main character and actually kind of calm. Like they're, they they have the connection in here. They're, mm -hmm. they're one. I love it. It's beautiful. And the color scheme is just so good. Yeah. Andrea has been, has been keeping up with every prompt and just always puts out such amazing stuff. It, it's impossible to pick from all of their, their work. I feel so guilty. I had to drop Vamptober like very early because I had so many other things to do that I need to catch up now. I need to actually go into November and start drawing things. <laughs> Uh, but okay, I'm going to trust you in this and I'm going to click this link, although I'm afraid now, but let's do you it. You should always trust me. Inner monster. <gasps> Just wait. <gasps> Damn! <laughs> This is so cool, isn't it? Yes. Let me let me shift it. Oh yeah, there. Are, oh, this is super cool. I love it. That's that's a really cool representation of the theme. Uh, for, yeah. By uh, step up your game, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This this uh, nickname never stops uh, amusing me. It's super cool. I love it. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get to day eleven. Faith that hurts. And this was also, the, there were so many different representations of this. Um, some that took it as a faith of a vampire and some that took it as, a, you know, faith being used by others to hurt a vampire. Mm -hmm. It's really impossible. This was the hardest one for me to pick yeah. <laughs> a sample of. Um, but I like these two, just the different styles of them were just so beautiful. 
Is the first one um, kind of the sun hitting or is it the faith hitting? I, I wonder. It, see, that's that's what I love about it is you can't really tell because there's yeah. the window. Yeah. Yeah. And there and it's the light is also has a cross. Yes. I love it. It's, it's beautiful. The, the middle picture is just so evocative. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And then we have, oh, poor Nosferatu. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> that's, that's really cool. And uh, oh, he's crying. Oh. I know. <laughs> Poor baby. And, um, the <laughs> caption says, I wanted to make a vampire that even being a vampire still has faith, even if it hurts him. Oh, damn. That so, makes it even darker. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's like they, you know, ha you know, are either facing it off against true faith or they have that. Um, I can't think of the word at the moment that a bane or a, a flaw. I mean, uh, I, I can't think of it at the moment. Imagine I, I, I know that, you know, V5 Kerbal doesn't specifically say that this is possible, but Imagine having a game in which you have a character that is a vampire with the remainers of the true faith, but it's only like self-applied, so it only works on on yourself. Oh, like self-flagellation? Oh, that's yeah. really dark. Well, that's really sad and dark. I know. I know. I want to make a character like this because I I love masochism in my game. Oh, <laughs> anyway, okay. Blood Hunter. Yes. For um, I really liked this one. It, read it up. Like Craig Oxbro. You, you can read the description. Oh, oh, sure. Um, for Bronwyn, the success of the circulatory system is a point of personal pride, which sometimes means going into a hospital disguised as an ER staffer to steal a specific bag from the blood bank herself, but she wouldn't do it if she didn't enjoy it. <laughs> and I just love that idea of, of someone who works in the hospital and is also a vampire. Yeah, and also I love the, the interpretation of the blood hunter theme as you know, because yeah. I was wondering how people are going to interpret. Are they going to go with blood hunt as a blood hunt? Are they going to go as, you know, blood hunter, maybe with hunters, actually, like vampire hunters? Or well, maybe there they're was, going... There was yeah. so many, so many. Um, the, exactly that. Um, blood hunter, uh, blood hunt, uh, you know, from the, from the Camarilla, blood hunter being uh, chasing down actual hunters and drinking their blood and mm. sometimes just chasing down prey. But this was the only one I saw that was just very regular, like, hey, I need <laughs> my blood, going to go to my work and get some. That's amazing. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and the next one is, yeah, I love it. Uh, Isn't that beautiful? It is beautiful. By Eric Castro? Eric yeah. Castro, yes. And yeah. I see Alessa here in the comments. Yes, and that's <laughs> one of the reasons I, it popped up on my thing, because of that. So, Alessa, thank you like, so much for highlighting. Gotta feature it. Highlighting good works. It looks really, really cool. All right, and we have day 13, day uh, Eyes of the Beasts. Yes, okay, so this is where I replaced the audio with this one, but I think you'll really like this one. Okay, I'll let me start. check it out. Nice. Wow. Beautiful. That's really, really cool. I love it. Also, like, there's so much work put into every single one of these. Like, that's, mm -hmm. that's really good. Also, my YouTube keeps telling me to watch your playthrough of Out for Blood. I should do that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not now. Maybe, Maybe not now, but definitely, definitely afterwards. And then we have uh, Super Rat Lords. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know, this, this idea of just this... Oops, I moved it. I'm sorry. This idea of this uh, smiling vampire just immediately caught my attention so <laughs> if, if if there was such a thing as a vampire puppy dog it would be cecil big pleading eyes asking for an ear scratch and a nice warm bowl of blood Aww. and uh, that, <laughs> I, I i really love that so i want to adopt it to my cut array <laughs> yeah exactly exactly eyes of the beast that's that's really wonderful i i like mm -hmm. it and also like the different interpretations of course we went with gangrel on uh on the um TikTok, but it, it seems to be super interesting to, to to see how people were going with the eyes theme specifically. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, oh LA by Night. That's so pretty. Yeah, I thought I should throw in some LA by Night fan art as well, because there's so much and normally I've been featuring that and then I'm like, oh look I at them. I want to have a comic book in the style. <laughs> so beautiful. It's amazing. Who who did, who did that? Kure. Kure Docs. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they just recently got into LA by night, so 
so beautiful. I, I mm -hmm. we need to show it to Josephine and and uh, Alexander. I believe they were tagged on it on Twitter, uh, but I'm 100 <laughs> sure. Perfect. So they said it already. And next we have Fiorenza Savona. Yeah. Victor McGoy. <laughs> And uh, that's how I picture Fiorenza every time she does talk to Victor in LA by night. That's exactly what I picture her doing. For a second, so. I thought it was Victor under her food, feet, and now I realize nope. that she's <laughs> on the phone with him. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> amazing. That would be, that would have been really funny. That would have been really amazing. <laughs> and I would have hoped that B. Dave would have been spamming that everywhere if that had been the case. <laughs> But, um, <laughs> I mean, I just picture her that way sitting up in Mexico City. Yeah, that's, definitely. That's just a normal night for her. And, of course, it's an interpretation of the uh, photography that is in, in the five yes. books. So, so that's yes. perfect. I love it. Extra cool. All right. So thank you so much, uh, Hadi, for showing uh, everyone a uh, family spotlight for this week. And uh, I will... Uh, and I just... Mm -hmm. Sorry. Can I just remind everyone to tag it Vamptober and do not be afraid to uh, tag me in your, like, just drive me crazy. Tag me, ping me on Discord, all that stuff. Do tag Hadi and do tag uh, Vamptober and uh, you can tag World of Darkness as well. We are going to uh, highlight more of that uh, also in November, actually, because uh, with all of the things that we are doing with Month of Darkness, sometimes we just don't have that much time to, especially, you know, go and uh, uh, like post new posts on various social media. So I would love to actually do more highlights of Vamptober throughout um, November. So I'm going to reach out to some of the artists, whether we can share your works. Uh, okay, thank you so much, Hadi, and see you later on. And also very much recommended to watch uh, Hadi's Out for Blood playthrough. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> thank you so much. See you. Bye. Thanks so much for joining us for today. I will be uh, coming back to the cozy room for those of you watching us live on the stream. And also right after this episode, we are going to have a teaser for the next episode of LA by Night up on YouTube if you want to check it out. So check out youtube.com slash world of darkness for the teaser showing up right after this episode. In the meantime, Daniel also the night and I'll see you later on.